What's up, everybody? One second. Little focus lip pillow in. So I have been getting a lot of questions about how to automate your business with AI uh, without hiring any team members. So I want to show you guys in this video how to think about, we got some pretty good stuff here, how to think about automating your business, uh, how this should work in the age of AI, whether you're a business owner, whether you're an operator, whether you're an AI insider, it doesn't matter. You're going to get a lot of video or value from this video. So why must businesses stay manual and broke? Uh, most of you guys think that you need to hire your way out of problems, right? And I'm, I've been guilty of this. You're doing 50K a month, so you hire a VA. Then you need someone to manage the VA. Then you need to build VAs for, or SOPs for the VA. Then you need to build systems for the manager. And then you need another VA. And then before you know it, you've got 15 people, 40K a month of payroll, and you're making less profit than when, when you were solo. And I did this mistake with Closer Cartel. Um, like, dude, I had months where I spent 100K in, in team, in business cost, 100 grand in info, which is stupid. Um, the real problem isn't that you need more people. It's that you don't know like really what you're doing and what should exist in place for that. So every task that you do manually is a task that is stealing time from you growing your business. And now with AI in the past where this would be a VA, some Filipinos, now it's, uh, it's Claude, it's GPT, right? It's N8M. And so that's what we're going to break down. So what do you automate? This is a very big question. One problem that I've had personally is like, for example, I got an assistant at one point. I didn't know how to use an assistant. I didn't know how to like tell her to do things. I didn't know what to have her do. And I just didn't utilize her. So like, what do you even automate is the first step in automation, um, especially with AI. So what you guys need to do is basically break down the major aspects of your business. So these are just online business aspects. But for example, these are all probably things that you're doing if you're watching this video. Organic content, the ideation, scripting, recording, editing. That's what goes into content. Paid ads, analysis of competitors, competitors' ads, competitors' copy, uh, writing copy, designing and editing the creatives, media buying itself, lead gen. That's a whole other topic. Uh, client acquisition, cold email, responding to prospects, follow-up, onboarding, delivery. These are all really probably the core main parts of your business. Well, what can be replaced by AI and what should be replaced by AI? And then I did the liberty of showing you guys this. So in organic content recording, eventually you'll be able to do this. Eventually this will be AI talking to you instead of me. But right now, no, editing, still no. So the parts that can be automated are the ideation and the scripting. What if I told you that this Miro board was pretty much done with AI? There's an example for you, paid ads. Analysis, all can be done with AI. Writing copy, all done with AI. Designing, all done with AI. Editing and media buying, still probably manual. Lead gen, you can do all that with AI. Client acquisition, all this can be done with AI. All of onboarding can be done with AI. And delivery depends on, on the nature of your business, okay? So now that you guys have a good idea, let's, let's actually take a look at that. So I'm not gonna give you like templates for N8N necessarily in this video. We can make another one about that, but I want you to have the idea and the thought process here. So ideation of content, you can 100% automate. And here is a real tangible example. So this specific automation would run once a day. It would search for threads and tweets on specific keywords or things you want to get, obviously, uh, information and data on. And it'll feed all that data to AI so that it can then filter and turn it into viral ideas or ideation or YouTube scripts or whatever you want. Um, and add all, all those to a Google sheet. So something like this, if you're already using n 8 if you're not, by the way, check out the other YouTube videos on this channel. But this would be run once a day, schedule trigger, Reddit posts, Reddit keywords, Twitter keywords, whatever, merge those all, send those to your ideation bot. I would make a separate project for this. Edit the fields, obviously the output from that into a Google sheet. Boom, done. Ideation is taken care of. You can then feed that to your copywriter, to your AI copywriter, to your other projects, whatever you wanna do, okay? Now let's look at copywriting itself. I've got a lot of really good videos on this on the channel, by the way. Um, I love AI copywriting. I, I've gotten, I just wrote an entire VSL yesterday with AI in about five hours. I wrote, I think the best VSL I've ever written and I've written some good ones. Okay. So for copywriting, very important is to understand how to properly do this or else you're just going to get some bullshit result and you're gonna be like, oh, this doesn't work. No, you're just doing it wrong. Okay. So you always want to give it, we, we kind of use this structure. So I want to tell it who it is. So if I'm writing direct response copy, the two goats are like Jason Fladlian and Dan Kennedy, right? So I'm going to tell it, hey, you are a copywriter impersonating Jason Fladlian or Dan Kennedy. And then you got to give it context, right? So I need what kind of copy 
for who or for what. And then here are the specific details. So this is what we call the context profile um, or more, more detail is the, the audience research context profile. This is something that we give to our students. It's basically a 42 questionnaire um, you fill out and it is your every piece of information you need for your ICP. And then you can just feed it to Claude or you feed it to whatever and it will spit out copy based on that ICP. And then you wanna give it specific instructions. Brain voice is also pretty cool. So like if you're gonna use this for emails or for reels or daily content, you basically want to feed it a bunch of your content and say, hey, create a brand voice JSON file off of the way this sounds and the feeling of it. And then you just integrate that profile into your instructions for all copy you do. Again, guys, there's really detailed videos on this on this channel. So just go watch those. Um, but you want to watch this video. This, this is going to change, change the game for you. Designing. Now, I'm not a graphic designer, but I'll keep it this simple. I use 4.0. Uh, on GPT to do a lot of graphic stuff. Like if you go look at the Kendo website, as I'll tell myself, this background was done with AI. Um, what else was done with AI? These were done by a designer. This was done with AI. This code element here was done with AI. Like the fact that you can toggle here. Um, this calculator was done with AI with 4.0. These images were done with 4.0, okay? So you don't really need to be paying a designer except for really niche things. You can do thumbnails, backgrounds, assets, graphics, all with GPT-4.0. Um, so pretty simple. We'll keep that one very light. Now, responding to prospects. This is where you need to start to think and map out. I, I would literally draw this out on a piece of paper. Like, where am I spending time that I don't need to be spending time? And if that is like consistently the same thing, replace it with AI. Build a system around it. So like responding to emails, you can easily build an automation and in innate in that will take care of that, right? Um, and not only that, will it respond, but you can feed them into a database that will give you a lot of information on not just responding to the emails, but like common complaints, common questions, common concerns, common things that you do that you can then replace those as well, right? And then you get into things like onboarding, where instead of you manually like going to Slack, adding their email, emailing them. Hey, here's your onboarding form. Hey, here's this form. Build a flow for it one time and it will be done forever, right? Onboarding form to Claude, personalized email with the data that you need. And guys, this is so easy to do with, with innate in. Um, add them to your CRM, add them to Slack, done. Now delivery, this is, this is a good one. This, this is a really good one. So delivery can vary, obviously, depending on what your guys' business is. But some businesses can fully automate their delivery, some can't. Um, you need to understand which basket you fall into there, but things you can automate are writing. Copywriting can be automated. You just need to review it with a person. Data analysis, AI will do that better than you can anyway. Basic design, lead qualification, research, all automated. Mostly op automated, like I said, copywriting, video editing, thumbnail designing, ad campaign management, website building, uh, framer, click funnels, lovable. You can automate most of this. And then one-on-one -on -one consulting, you can't automate, right? Legal services, you can, you, I, I'm not going to say to use Claude as a lawyer. You should probably use a lawyer still. But um, this sort of stuff, you can't really automate. So the big 80-20 is look at what can be and automate what can be or what cannot. Then obviously don't worry about it because you can't do much anyway. Now, this is why most automations fail. And this is pretty important is you try to automate everything at once. That's a problem. You got to go one by one. And you don't want to do it all at once because you still have some sort of a workflow that will be, then be created because of you creating automations. And you want to do this one by one so that you can figure out what flows well into your business, okay? Mistake number two is automating a broken process. So if you have a process that already doesn't work, like every time you onboard someone, you have to go do this thing manually because it's broke. Like you got to fix that before you try to automate that process or it will just automate a error. Like automation isn't a brain. An AI agent isn't like a fully autonomous person. It's a process that's repeatable, but that process has to work. And then don't overcomplicate things, okay? Keep things simple. Uh, simple is better for everything, to be honest. So if you're going to automate something, go back to the flow. Go back to this N8N. In. Like if you're going to build a workflow and look at it like from a real lens of how do I make this as simple as possible? Oh, email, project that responds to email, send them an email. Done. You don't need to add a filter and then an if then and then a wait and then a database and then a table. You don't need to do all that. Keep it simple. Okay. So when it comes to automating your guys' business, 
the 80-20 is really going to be understanding what can be automated, really map out all the repeatable things that you're doing right now. If it is repeatable and it is automatable, automate it. If it is not, don't. It's that simple, okay? And I would genuinely take a screenshot of this if I were you guys. This right here is money. Um, these can all be replaced right now with AI. The red and the orange will be able to be replaced, just not yet. So if you are doing... If you're doing anything that is in the green here as a service, you should probably find a new job, okay? So if it can be automated, you can still offer it as a service, but just do the work with the AI. Don't be the guy that is the actual contractor that is doing the cold emails because someone can just replace you. And this is, again, you guys will see this in the coming weeks. This is a big thing we're going to harp on as we roll out AI Insiders, our new basically AI service business uh, program is you don't need to be the AI like wizard building tech and all this stuff. You just need to be the guy that knows how to connect all these things and use these things to achieve what people need in their business. Like that's as simple as it is. And so looking through that lens, also reverse engineer it and say, hey, if someone can do all these things with AI, I don't need to sell AI automation as a service. I need to sell lead gen as a service and do it with AI. I need to sell ads as a service and do it with AI. Okay, if that makes sense. So hope this helps.